I'm Tiziana Cardini, I'm fashion director of Rinoscente and uh, I am introducing Afrofuture, uh, which is an event that we have hosted during Salone del Mobile. We are very happy to, you know, host something that gives the opportunity to African talents to be in conversation with talents from the rest of the world and finding common ground. My name is Beatrice Galilee and I'm the curator of Afrofuture. My name is Nana Okran and I'm an advisor on Afrofuture. This year we decided to do something that was much more cultural, looking at a design from an entirely new perspective. And the perspective that we chose was a kind of future Africa, um, an optimistic, science fiction-led, technology-based, dreaming, thinking uh, continent. The legacy of the project, I hope, is that people have more and more conversations about design that comes out of Africa, designers who perhaps happen to be African or who are influenced by Africa, because you'll find that with the programme not everybody involved was African, but Africa was a thread that ran through the whole thing. So it's a very global looking project which reflects what's going on around us anyway, I think that's really important. We tried to pick up on different parts of African, African culture, different, I mean there's 54 countries in Africa and uh, we really tried to pick up kind of key issues and key points across the whole programme. Um, so we had a relationship between Portugal and Angola, um, which we tried to highlight with um, a programme with Paulo Moreira and an artist called Batida. Um, and we also tried to look at the relationship between China and Africa. Um, and we did that with the, the Go West project who came in from Shanghai and showed us their investigation. They were here all week. We had uh, people from Nairobi, Cyrus Kibiru. Um, we had the former mayor of Accra. Um, we Isn't had Nat Amatefio. <laughs> We'll be very upset if we don't say his name. We basically had speakers who come from different African cities because I feel that what this program has done is tap into all the conversations that are happening globally around Africa. You know, it's a continent that's, I keep saying this, but it's like it's Africa's the hottest state in town. So the talks that were curated, the people involved, had actually travelled from those cities, which is really quite, quite a coup to get those people to come out because they're, they're big people in their own right, making impacts in their respective cities, be it Lagos, Accra, Nairobi, Dakar, and so on. And they've actually come to Milan, which is not the place you would think to find these people and have these kinds of conversations. Another a sort of interesting component that really was great for us was the Jungle Gym, who are also super young, yeah. based in Cape Town. These two young kids who, who just a year ago started their own science fiction, pulp fiction fanzine. We also had um, Daisy Ginsberg and Cher yeah. Potter, who are like really exploring mm. really what Afrofuture is in, the, in their whole project in Probable Africa. The design world really needs to turn its head around and look at what's going on in Africa, in that continent, and to sort of be quiet about it as well, and yeah. sit and learn, you know, because there are some amazing people. This is just the tip of the iceberg. But I've heard people ask, when is part two? You know, which city are you taking it to next? People just walking through and stopping you and saying, what's that, what's going on? You know, people who've come in to buy a bowl and suddenly they're dancing to Angolan music. You know, where are you going to get that? We hope that we have succeeded in doing something interesting and uh, artistic and uh, with lots of energy.